The trouble is, when you lead through sensation, the one that follows that first leap must always be bigger and better. Or people get bored. They lose interest. And they fade away. You go to see a magician. And one act builds on the other and on the other and on the other. And all of a sudden he sits down at your table, orders a drink, and says, let's talk. Let's have a conversation. You just spent 50 bucks to sit at this table. Are you going to be interested? No. You don't want to talk to him. You want to see the miracles. You want to see the magic. You want to see the next big thing. That's leadership by sensation. When it stops, you get bored, you move on, you quit listening, and you forget you ever knew them in the first place. The funny thing about the instant celebrities that we see in our world today is this. Many of us watch them with rabid fascination. Their every move is monitored by the magazines, the TV, the newspapers. But here's the catch. We're not really interested in them as people. We don't really care what they think or feel. We don't care about their success. We're not interested in that at all. All we're doing is waiting for them to fail. That's why we watch with rapid fascination, because we know the day will come when the sensation runs out. And just like that, They'll be gone from our memory. We'll no longer know their name. We won't care what they did. And they'll fade more quickly than they first arrived in our consciousness. <coughs> Jesus trusted in God. He sought to follow His Father's will, not His own. He gave Himself to God. So that God could set him on the right path to follow. When we give that same trust in our own lives, offering ourselves to God completely, he can chart a right course for us too. When we get hung up on success, failure, and other people, when we get hung up with that rabid fascination of reality television, when we get jealous or envious, we look around at the success of other people, even the authentic success, that new car in the driveway, that new iPhone, and we stop and we wonder, Lord, where's mine? Why can't that be me? When we demand God, we overstep our bounds. When we test God, we're exploiting God. We're putting Him on the spot for something that we want, not something that He wants. Jesus knew better than to test God. Popularity through instant fame, through reliance on sensational actions or words, is not authentic leadership. Jesus trusted God to guide the way. And Jesus followed loyally, even to the cross. <clears throat> we Christians should seek that same authenticity, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we ask the hard questions of our faith and of the world in which we live? Shouldn't we ignore the screaming and the yelling, the accusations that play out in the media, our politics. And shouldn't we instead focus? Shouldn't we focus on the real needs that actually must be met to make our nation and our world a better place? We should listen for God's will, not our own. And we should listen in the quiet places where real struggle happens. God does not speak through TV networks. I don't care which one you turn on. God is not speaking through...
through television. God does not speak through Facebook or social media platforms. He doesn't need to do that. He has no use for bickering or fighting. He has no use for yelling his opinion or screaming out what must be done. God is beyond accusations and yelling. God is beyond anger and judgment to particular people from a particular viewpoint. God loves us too much to give direction that way. You know why I know that? I know that because God did not send us a Savior on a reality TV special. He did not send us a Savior through a big production show. We roll out the red carpet, cameras flashing. Star-studded event. He didn't do that. Not at all. Jesus came to us in the humblest, most human way. He was born into poverty and obscurity. Yet from that place, He came to heal the world. Be careful what you buy into. Listen for and trust in God's love. Be faithful to God in the choices you make. Returning to our story just one last time. Again, Satan took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. How about it, Jesus? All the power and wealth? Look at this. This is all mine to give. I have control over it all, and I can give it to whomever I choose. I choose to give it to you, and all you have to do is bow down and worship me. Nothing fancy, just a little spiritual commitment. You can have it all. Think of all you can do with this wealth. You would never have to worry. You could take care of millions of people. After all, that's what you do, want to do, right? Just bow down and worship me. Get away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only Him. And Satan shook his head and walked away for a time. And God's angels came and took care of Jesus. Have you ever believed in something? Have you ever believed in something so much that you were willing to do whatever it took to see that thing come to fruition? Were you even willing to compromise with someone on some minor issue in order to see that your larger goal be accomplished and quickly? Jesus was offered a compromise. He was given the opportunity to change the world to fulfill his mission and ministry through the power and glory that would be given him in exchange for one little thing. All he had to do was bow down and worship one other than God. That's it. Acknowledge the power of someone other than God and in exchange he could quickly accomplish every single thing he'd been called to do. Instant gratification. Just like that. Simple. Easy. Maybe the easy button of Jesus' time. One little thing. And the world would be fixed. But Jesus would not compromise. He gave God the worship and service that was owed to God without hesitation and without any doubt. Jesus trusted that it was God who would see his mission through. And by that obedience, Jesus did complete his mission, didn't he? And he did possess 
all authority in heaven and on earth. Shouldn't we, the church, follow his lead? It seems our world spins quickly outside the doors of this place. People yell at one another. People fight with one another. They angle for power and control. People belittle one another. Trod on one another. They stop nothing. And they're willing to compromise even their own integrity in order to see that whatever goal or ambition it is that they have is achieved. We see it every day outside the doors of this building. Yet, even inside a church, we can hurt one another. We hurt one another when we let our personal opinions or our preferences get in the way of doing the greater work of God's kingdom. Can't we do better inside this place and beyond these walls Shouldn't we do better? Are we really called to bring the influences of the outside world inside God's house? Are we called to do that? Is that allowed? Is that acceptable? Is that right? Aren't we called instead to take God's influence outside Walls, into that world of screaming and yelling and bickering in order that we might serve God, bring about His kingdom, and trust Him and meet Him at the place in our world where He is working now and where we are most needed, where there are needs to be met that are greater than our own petty differences. Aren't we called to be faithful? Jesus was tempted by the very same things that trouble us today. Material possessions, publicity and prestige, and power. He resisted. And he overcame these urges because his life is based on one thing, the love of God. The good news is that Jesus invites each and every one of us to have such a relationship with God, a relationship based on love, built on trust and grown by faithfulness, a relationship that will be our own strong foundation to survive the storms that come in this life. How firm is your foundation? Amen.